In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural speckled enamel material. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description. So after we create the procedural material, I'm going to show you how to join it together into this node group so you can customize the look of the material. So we have this scale value, which is going to change the size of the entire material. And then we also have the small speckle scale because there's two different layers of speckles. And then we also have the small speckle size. So that's basically the individual size of each speckle. Then we have the same thing for the large speckles and then also the large speckle size. Then we have two different colors. So we have this enamel color. So I have to have this kind of as a blue color. So this is like one of those classic camping mugs, which is blue, but I think also like maybe a red color, maybe like a darker red color looks pretty good. So you can change this to whatever color you want. And then also you can change the speckles color. Then we also have the roughness to change the roughness of the material. And then we also have a clear coat, which is a little bit of extra shine over the surface. So we have the coat weight, so you can turn that up and down. And then we also have the roughness of that coat. Then we have the noise bump scale, so there's a tiny little bit of noise over the surface just to make the metal look slightly bumpy, and then there's two different detail levels for that noise. And then finally there is a bump strength here, so you can make the noise stronger. So if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description. You can also check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural procedural material tutorial playlist. And then one more thing before we start the video, I wanted to let you know about a really great render farm service for Blender. Blender Grid is an easy to use render farm specifically designed for Blender. I've used the service and I highly recommend it. Start by uploading your Blender file or a zip file with the Blender file and textures. You can then check over the render settings on the website and make any changes. Blender Grid will calculate the cost before you start rendering. It will also render some preview frames that you can check over to make sure everything is rendering properly before you start the render. You can even choose when you want the render to finish if you're on a tight deadline. Once it finishes, just download the files and compile the frames in a video editor. You can find my full review video linked in the description and and if you use my affiliate link to sign up, you can get $20 off your first cloud render. So before I make the material, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I just recently posted a separate beginner follow along modeling tutorial on how to model this kind of classic camping mug. So if you'd like to watch that tutorial, you can check it out with the link in the video description, and then you can add the procedural material to this object. Now, one thing to note is that this object is very small because like if I just add like a default cube here, you can see I made the mug very small. And that's because I wanted to model it to the real life scale in Blender and in the other other tutorial that I show you how to create the mug, I scale the object down so it's a better size to the real life scale. So you can check out that video if you're interested. And that's the object that I'm going to be adding the material to. So then I also added this camera here and I just pointed the camera right at the object. And if you select the camera and go over here to the object data properties, I turn the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit. And then also if I go to the output properties, I just set it to 1920 by 1920 so it's a square image. So I'll go into the rendered viewport mode and ask for the lighting, I added this big area light right here. So over on the area light settings, I turned the power to 100. I just left it as a white color and I turned the shape to disk to add some nice lighting to the objects. And then also if I go over here to the world properties, I added in the machine shop 02 1k HDRI from polyhaven.com. So the link is in the video description if you want to download it. And I downloaded the 1k HDR version. So to add in the HDRI, you can just click on the yellow dot here next to color and you can choose environment texture and then just just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. So then I can also go up here to the render properties and open up the film tab. And I turned on the transparent button just to make the background transparent. And then also if I open up the color management here, I'm using the view of filmic and the look to very high contrast to pop out the colors and make it look more saturated. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'll go into the rendered viewport mode. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll just select the object and I'll add a new material. And I can just call this speckled enamel. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in the video. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit. You can go to the preferences and then go over here to the add-ons tab. And on the search, you can search for Node and you can just enable the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So first what I want to do is I want to create two different layers of the speckles and we're going to mix them together. 
So let's go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture, and let's Control Shift select the Voronoi texture to preview it. And then what I want to do with the Voronoi selected is hit Control T, and that is using the feature of the Node Wrangler, and it's going to add the texture cord and mapping nodes. And then I want to use the object coordinates, so I'll put the object into the vector, and the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. And then to keep everything nicely organized, I'm going to drag the texture coordinate and mapping down here, and I'm going to press F, and I can type mapping and hit enter so that way it's going to join it into a mapping frame so now here in the Voronoi we can change the settings so I want to make the scale a thousand so we have a bunch of little dots there and then I'll turn the detail up to 10 so if I zoom in now you can see all those dots all those speckles there have little bits of detail and then I'll leave the other settings how they are now I want to make this more contrasted because it's kind of like grayish and it's not very sharp where the speckles are. So I'm going to search for ramp and I'm going to add a color ramp and put this after the Voronoi. So now what I can do is drag the black tab over to make the black pop out, but then I can also drag the white tab over and so the black is going to be less visible. So I'll drag the white tab kind of to about here and the black tab over to about here. All right, so now let's box select these two nudes and I'll hit F and I'm going to call this small speckle. So now what I want to do is take the small speckles and duplicate it and make the large speckles. So I'm going to duplicate all these nodes. So select all of them, Control Shift D to duplicate them, and I'll preview the small speckles. Let's click on the frame and press F2 to rename this. And instead of small, I'm going to call this large speckles. So now let's change the settings for the large speckles. So we'll go down here to the Voronoi, and I'm going to turn the scale to just 400 instead. So they're a lot bigger, but I'll leave all the other settings how they are. So then here for this color ramp, if I just zoom out here, what I want to do is drag the black tab over and that's going to make them quite a bit bigger. You can see if I drag this over, they're bigger, and then I'll drag the white tab maybe to about there. So now if you control shift select between these, we have the small ones and the large ones, but I want to mix them together. So if I hold down the shift key and select both color ramps, I can press control zero. And control zero is going to add this mix color, so I'll drag it over here and open it up, and it's going to mix them both together. So what I want to do is just have this set up here where the top color ramp goes into A and the bottom one goes into B, but you can see if I drag the factor, it's basically going to blend between the first one or the second one. But I want to add the black values of all of them to mix them together. So I'll take the mix here and I'll turn this to darken, and that way it's just going to add the dark values. So I can now turn the factor all the way up to 1, and you can see we now have these small speckles and the large speckles, and they're mixed together. So now what I can do is make the custom colors. So I'm going to search for a mixed color and drop this after the darken. And we want the result to be going into the factor to determine what part is going to be A and what part is going to be B. So for A, this is going to be the speckles, so I'm going to make this white. And then for color B, I'm going to make this kind of a nice, strong, saturated blue color. And if you do want to use the same colors I'm using, then here on color A, this is going to be a hex code of E2, E2, E2. And here on color B, this is going to be a hex code of 26. 3685. Or you can make it whatever color you want. I also think like a red color looks pretty good. So I'm going to box select these nodes, hit F, and I can type in color and hit enter. And then what we can do is take the mix result and put that into the base color, and I'll just preview the principled shader. So now you can see it's definitely starting to look like that classic enamel mug, kind of like a camping mug or something. So what I also want to do is search for a hue saturation value, and I'm going to drop this here in the small speckles between the Voronoi and the coloring. I'm going to search for another hue saturation value and put this in between the large speckles as well. Now why we're doing this is because we have this value, and so the value is going to make everything lighter and darker, so we can use that later in the custom node group. And it's going to control the individual size of the speckles. So now what I want to do is make this look a lot more like a shiny mug here because it's actually pretty rough. So let's go over to the principled shader. So on the roughness, I'm going to turn this to 0.2 so it's quite a bit more shiny. And then what I want to do is open up the coat here so we can add some clear coat. So I'll turn the weight all the way up to 1. So that's basically going to add like an extra kind of shiny layer over the surface. And then on the roughness here, I like turning this to like a 0.07. So you can kind of see if I turn the weight down and turn it up, you can see those extra reflections there is the clear coat. So I think like a 0 0.07 looks pretty good. So this is definitely looking more like an enamel mug, but one more thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a bump here, just to make kind of a very rough noise over the surface so it looks slightly kind of wobbly on the surface. So I'm going to search for a noise texture, 
I will drop it down here and I'll preview the noise texture and let's put the mapping vector into the vector the noise texture. And I can change the settings for this. So I'm gonna turn the scale up to 40, but then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So I'm not gonna turn up the detail because I don't want it to look super noisy. I just want it to look a, li a little bit kind of lumpy and bumpy. So that's why I'm not turning up the detail. So now what I wanna do is put this into a bump node. So we're gonna search for bump and we're gonna put the factor into the height value. And then we can put the bump normal into the normal. So now I can just preview the principal shader. So by putting the factor into the height value, that's going to convert it to bump data. Now it's a little bit hard to see right now. If I turn this distance value up to a bigger number, you can see what it's doing. So it looks nice and bumpy. What I'm going to do is turn the distance to a 0 0.001. Now another way that we're going to be able to see it a lot better is if we put the bump into this other normal. So right now this bump is going into this normal. So if I just turn down the coat weight, you can kind of see a little bit of bump, but it's very subtle. It's hard to see, but that's because there's this extra coat layer on top. And so these reflections aren't looking bumpy. So if we put this bump normal also into the normal of the coat weight, now you can definitely see it looks a lot more bumpy. You can see kind of on the reflections there, it looks a little bit wobbly whereas before it was just straight. So we can box select these two nodes. I'll hit F and I can call this bump and hit enter. I can also shift right click and drag over this wire and then let go to add a reroute. And then I can just drag the reroute over there so that the wires aren't overlapping. So that is it for the procedural material. So let's now join it together into a node group to make it customizable. So I'm gonna click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. And I'll press control G to join it together into a node group. So I'll hit the tab key to go outside the node group. And I'm just gonna drag the node group over here. And then let's just drag it out to make it bigger. And I'm going to copy the material name and paste it here into the node group. Now I want to rename the BSDF to shader, so let's hit the tab key to go into the node group, and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And you can go to the group tab, and you can see there are the group sockets here, so I'm going to double click on this and just rename it to shader, because I like that better. So now right here on the group input, we can add up all the custom values to control them outside the node group. So the first value that I want to add is the mapping scale, because the mapping is plugged up to all the textures, so this mapping scale will control the size of the entire material. So I'm going to put the scale into the extra socket, and if we click on the scale, right now it's three values, but to make it one value, I'm going to turn the vector type to float. Then I can turn the default value to 1, and then we'll hit tab to go outside the node group, and we can turn the scale back to 1. So now that'll change the overall size. So let's go back into the node group. So I'm going to drag the node group right up here, and you can see we have this scale here for the small speckles. So I'm going to put the scale into the extra socket, and then let's rename this to like small speckles scale. Then what I want to do is change the size of each one of those small speckles. So you see, can see we have this value here to make it bigger and smaller. So let's put the value into the extra socket. And this one, I'm going to copy the name and paste it here. But instead of calling it scale, I'm going to call it like size, or you could also call it like individual size, whatever you want to do. Let's drag the mapping back and I'll drag the group input down here. And I now want to do the same thing for the other large speckles. So I'll put the scale into the extra socket and then the value from the hue saturation value into the extra socket. So then we'll rename this one. So this one is going to be called large speckle scale. And then this one is going to be called large speckles size. Now what I want to do is add the colors. So I'm going to drag the group input over here and we can put color A and color B into the extra sockets. And then we can just rename this. So color A is going to be the speckle color. And then we can rename color B to the enamel color. Then we can also add the roughness. So let's just drag this down here. I'll put the roughness into the extra socket. And then we can also take the coat weight put that in the extra socket as a custom value, and then also the coat roughness, put that into the extra socket. And then I want to control the noise bump settings, so let's drag this right down here behind the bump. And I first want to put the scale into the extra socket, and let's bring this down, and I'm going to rename this to noise bump scale. Then I want to control this detail value and also this roughness value, just in case you want to control these. So I'll put the detail and the roughness into the extra sockets, but then this one I'm going to rename to noise bump detail one and then the other one it's called roughness but it kind of is really adding more detail so i'm going to rename this to noise bump detail two because if you add them both together it's going to add a lot more detail and then finally i just want to take the bump strength put that into the extra socket and this one i'm going to just call noise bump strength 
So I can hit the end key to close the side panel. I'm just gonna drag the mapping over here, and then I can drag the group input over to the very back, and I'll hit tab to go outside the node group. So that'll wrap it up for this tutorial on creating this procedural speckled enamel material. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material to get the Blender file with the mug object and the node group with all the custom settings, you can purchase it with the links in the video description, and that's a great way to help support the channel. You can also purchase my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials, and they're all pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.